We've devoted the entire program so far to covering what's happening in the Bahamas, in the U.S., the rising death toll in the Bahamas, the relief efforts, important facts about what's happening in the Bahamas and what people are facing right now. We've devoted nearly all our reporting this week, in fact, to the situation in the Bahamas, as well as the concerns about the east coast of the U.S. But for the next few minutes, we're going to talk about something that, on the face of it, is not important compared to what's going on. It's a mistake the president made about the storm and its path. It's important, it isn't important compared to the loss of life and the devastation that we're seeing, but to the president, it is important, and that's why we're talking about it. It's so important, in fact, that he's focused on it repeatedly all week. The president has produced charts and had White House staff work on statements. There's no way to know exactly how much time he's wasted focusing on this while a storm bears down on the U.S. and while people in the Bahamas are desperate for help. Now, since the 1st of September, other than retweeting Hurricane Center updates, he's tweeted directly just twice about the Bahamas. By contrast, today alone, he's sent five of his own tweets and one retweet about his erroneous claim on Sunday that, quote, Alabama will most likely be hit much harder than anticipated. Just minutes later, the National Weather Service in Birmingham corrected him, saying, quote, Alabama will not see any impacts from Dorian. We repeat, no impacts from Hurricane Dorian will be felt across Alabama. That was Sunday, Sunday morning. So now that's where you would hope this whole thing would have ended a totally inconsequential mistake in the face of a potentially killer storm in the U.S. and a killer storm, for a fact, in the Bahamas. Now, that tweet was on Sunday. By then, the storm path had shifted so much that anyone watching knew it was not going to hit Alabama, quote, much harder than anticipated, as the president tweeted. But the president can't stand being wrong. We know this. He can't stand being corrected. So instead of just forgetting about it, he has continually focused on this and has kept tweeting about how right he was. And yesterday, he went beyond even that. We thought we'd give you a update on the hurricane. We got lucky in Florida, very, very lucky indeed. Uh, we had actually, our original chart was that it was going to be hit, hitting Florida directly. Maybe I could just see that, Kevin. Uh, it was going to be hitting directly, and that would have affected a lot of other states. Uh, but that was the original. Uh, chart, and you see it was going to hit uh, not only Florida, but Georgia. It could have, uh, was going toward the Gulf. That was what we, what was originally projected. And it took a right turn. And ultimately, hopefully, we're going to be lucky. It depends on what happens with South Carolina and North Carolina. But it's heading up the coast, and Florida was uh, grazed, uh, mostly wind, and we're going to have a report on that. So, that map he saw, remember, by the way, he started that saying this is an update on the storm, uh, uh, but he's talking about, you know, a tweet he sent out on the, the uh, projection from a week uh, or six days uh, before that event. So that map he held up is a projection of multiple paths that Dorian might take, a projection from last Thursday. And yes, someone has used a black Sharpie to draw on Alabama, as you see right there, an additional projection. Not sure where that came from, who drew it, though we know the president uses a black Sharpie. It's not part of the projected path of the storm. And again, all of this, what you're seeing, that's from Thursday. As you know, hurricane paths are updated every few hours. They change drastically sometimes. By Sunday, when the president raised that false alarm about Alabama, the storm track had shifted even farther east, even farther away from the state. The White House claimed the president was being updated hourly. But he seemed to think on Sunday that Alabama was going to get hit harder than anyone thought. This morning, he's still tweeting about that to prove that he was right on Sunday, which he wasn't. Quote, Alabama was going to be hit or grazed, and then Hurricane Dorian took a different path up along the East Coast. Yeah, it did. It took a different path. From Thursday to Sunday, the paths changed. But on Sunday, the president still thought it was going to hit Alabama. He continued this evening when he tweeted out four charts that he seemed to think proves his point, except, as you can see, not a single one of them refers to hurricane-force winds. And again, they're from Thursday, not Sunday, when he sent his tweet about Alabama. A lot changes in a hurricane, as we all know. Then, late today, President Trump personally directed his Homeland Security Advisor, a guy who probably has a lot of important things to do for, you know, Homeland Security, Rear Admiral Peter Brown, to issue a statement. And while it appears intended to back up the president's claim that he was not mistaken on Sunday, about Alabama, the wording of it is actually very careful. It refers to the briefing on Sunday at about 1230 when the president said this. And I will say mistakes, and it may get a little piece of 
a great place. It's called Alabama, and Alabama could even be in for at least some very strong winds and something more than that it could be. Uh, okay. So now, uh, very strong winds, he said, in Alabama. This is Saturday, 1230, uh, or even something more than that, he said. Wow, possible, you know, something more than that. So in today's statement, Admiral Brown says, and I quote, the president's comments were based on that morning's Hurricane Dorian briefing, which included the possibility of tropical storm force winds in southeastern Alabama. You'll notice he says nothing about something more than that, as the president said there, much less that Alabama could, as the president tweeted just hours before, quote, be hit much harder than anticipated. So in addition to that, CNN has also learned that late today, the president called Fox News White House correspondent John Roberts into the Oval Office to argue his case shortly after Roberts did a live shot debunking the president's claims. So this is how the commander in chief spent a good part of the day with the death toll climb in the Bahamas, Coast Guard men and women risking their lives right now in this moment in the Carolinas, the Bahamas, good people everywhere, donating supplies and money and expertise and so many others wondering how they too can help, what they can do. The president of the United States spending time making sure no one ever forgets about the one thing in this entire terrible episode that simply doesn't matter. And yes, we are wasting time talking about it, but it's what the president of the United States is wasting him to his time thinking about and talking about. And that's why we're talking about it, because the president is wasting his time focused on this and talking about it and having his staff run around and make statements. Not to, it doesn't matter to anyone but himself. 